As you can probably tell by the number of guides I've put out so far, Greninja is not an easy character to learn at all. There's so much depth to our character and we're constantly finding new ways to optimize him, so regardless of your skill level, there's always room to improve. That being said, I've been playing Greninja for about 4 years now and I'm kind of known as the labber for the character, so I'd say I have a bit of knowledge when it comes to improving. Lucky for you, I'm dropping some of that knowledge in this video. You've read the title already, here are 5 tips to improve your Greninja. Number 1. Recognizing when not to go for jab locks. I know I'm gonna upset a lot of people by saying this, but hype does not equal optimal. Okay, sure, Greninja is a really hype character and you can get a lot of fancy stuff from him mainly through using jab locks. However, there are times where jab locking is not the most optimal thing to go for. Let me hit you with an example real quick. If you hit your opponent with a back air at early percents, you can force a tech chase. From here, you can cover their options and get some nice early percent. What way too many Greninjas will do is they won't even consider the chance that the opponent will tech and they'll just go for a jab lock. Okay, let's compare these two scenarios real quick. Scenario 1, your opponent misses the tech, you hit them with a jab lock and then do a dash attack up smash. Boom, easy, 48%. Scenario 2, your opponent misses the tech and you hit them with a dash attack up smash. What's the difference in percent between these two scenarios? 5. Hey, 5% five is 5%, five right? Not exactly. Let's say your opponent does hit the tech from back air. In this situation, you're forced to commit to jabs and you get, what, like 12%? Okay, whatever, it's still something. Now let's say your opponent hits the tech and techs away. What do you get? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Compared to just going for a jab lock, dash attack covers so many more options it gives you more reward. Dash attack can cover no tech, tech in place, and tech away. So even if your opponent misses that tech, you only lose like 5%. Alright, let's go to another scenario. Holy fuck my voice. Fast fall up air, we all love it. And we especially love it when we can do a fast fall up air jab lock F smash. It can kill, it can put your opponent off stage, doing a dash forward jab can cover your opponent teching. It seems perfect, right? Not perfect enough. Dash forward down tilt, let's take a look at this. This covers the same 3 options as dash forward jab, gives you more reward at mid percents, and if your opponent's in the down tilt up smash window, you can get a kill regardless of your position on the stage. All you have to do is get yourself out of the mindset of going for jab locks 24-7. But, if your opponent doesn't tech, abuse the hell out of jab locks, dude. They're there. Tip numero dos, recognizing down tilt windows. I see it time and time again. Greninja's will go for down tilt up smash when it doesn't connect, the opponent will air dodge out of down tilt forward air, or the Greninja will do a down tilt short hop forward air when they should have full hopped. Let me do you a favor. 3, 2, 1, BOOM! You see this here? This is the frame advantage that we get off of down tilt. It's gonna be linked in the description, so make sure to check it out. Also, this combo here. Holy crap, you guys ignore it. Down tilt attack cancel back here helps out so much. I think the reason it goes so ignored is because it's a bit tricky to pull off and it seems really underwhelming compared to something such as down tilt forward air or down tilt up smash. But this is actually so helpful if your opponent's not at down tilt up smash or down tilt fair percent yet. It works in an extremely wide range of percentages too. Check this out, Bowser doesn't die to down tilt up smash until 116%. Down tilt attack cancel back air starts working at 41%. If you whip out your TI-84+, you'll see that this works for a 75% margin before down tilt up smash kills. 75, that's huge dude. So yeah, do not neglect this combo. My Smash Corner has a really in-depth video about attack cancel that you can watch, but there hasn't necessarily been a guide on just this combo for Greninja. So I'm gonna make that real quick. If you want to skip this section of the video, here's the timestamp. Alright, let's get to it. So the very first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have Tilt Stick on. This combo will not work with Smash Stick. Also, I really recommend having a shoulder button set to jump because otherwise if you don't use Claw Grip, this is going to be really hard to pull off. Alright, let's go into training mode real quick. After your opponent's in a percent where this will actually work, go ahead and hit them with a down tilt. After you hit your opponent with a down tilt, you want to input a C Stick F tilt in the opposite direction of your opponent. Within the first two frames of the F-Tilt, move the analog stick towards the opponent and press jump. If you did it right, ta-da, you got it. Really, really grind out this combo. Start out quarter speed until you can do this 10 times in a row, then take it to half, then two thirds, and then finally full speed. Before you hop onto Elite Smash for some reason, just go ahead and practice this in training mode until you can do it 10 times in a row. And just like that, your Greninja has improved a ton. We just talked about optimal down tilt combos, now what about optimal throw combos? I've seen times where people get a grab at 0% and get next to nothing off of it. Let me show you something real quick. 
These are the percents at which you can get an up throw up air guarantee. If you look very closely, you'll see that against none of the characters is it guaranteed at zero. So what can we do? Go for positional throws. If you manage to throw your opponent off stage or put them in a position where you can edge guard or ledge trap them, this will give you so much more percent than just an up throw. Also, up throw and back throw do the most damage, so they're optimal in this regard too. If you're at center stage and can't really throw your opponent off stage, go for back throw, it does the most damage. What are his second two favorite words? No tumble. Don't neglect this property, dude. Down throw no tumble works against a quarter of the roster and you can get some really good percent out of it. Check this out. Normally Greninja's will only do near dash attack up smash for a quick 36%. But using no tumble properties, we can revise that combo and change it from a 36% combo to a 70% combo. And before you say this only works because Bowser's a big body, I'm just gonna drop this clip right here. So instead of getting 9% from a back throw, or even worse, 6 from an up throw, you can get a quick 40% from a guaranteed no tumble down throw combo. I've gone ahead and updated the down throw no tumble spreadsheet so that you can see the percent at which down throw dash attack up smash connects. Just thank me by hitting that like button. Something else that you might want to consider is down throw no tumble into F tilt. If you manage to get an F tilt at these percents, holy fuck, I'm giving you guys so many resources. You can force a tech chase from your opponent and get a dash attack up smash on your opponent for a quick 50%. You can also use this to carry your opponent across the stage and get some edge cards going. Yeah, it's really cool. So despite down throw no tumble only working on a handful of the roster, it's a lot better than up throw into do nothing. Up air versus fast fall up air. A lot of the time, once Greninja's finally understand how to use fast fall up air, they get in the habit of doing it way too much. And they miss out on really solid confirms. There are a lot of situations, especially with platforms by the way, where you want to do regular up airs instead of fast fall up airs. Alright, let me hit you with an example. You're on PS2 and you manage to force a tech chase on the platform with a fast fall up air. From here, you can charge an up smash and cover a few options. There are actually a few problems with this. You have to guess which way your opponent's gonna go, your opponent could fall out if they're a Link or Ganon, and if you do get it to connect, you only get like 25%. Wait, only 25? That seems pretty damn reasonable, right? Well, what if I told you that you could take that potential 25% and turn it into a guaranteed stock? Instead of doing a fast hole up air, go ahead and buffer a short hop up air so that the final hitbox launches the opponent. Hey, that platform looks like it's in a really convenient spot. From here, do a full hop up air on your opponent and then land on the platform. Now because of Greninja's crazy high jump height, double jump into your opponent and connect an up air. Remember how we were making a guess earlier to get maybe 25%? These three up airs just got us 30, and we didn't even have to guess our opponent's option. Also, if you do this just right or have enough rage, you can get a guaranteed kill on your opponent. That being said, there are times where you want to go for the fast fall up air tech chase instead. If your opponent's at a high percent, it's really unlikely that you'll be able to land this combo, so just go ahead and get the tech chase. If you guess right, it's a free stock. Also, don't forget that you can combine regular up air with fast fall up air for some crazy combos. If you use the two together, you can get some really nice free flow combos that can guarantee you some stocks extremely early. Let me give you a bonus tip for using up air. Fast falling after up air. That doesn't sound like fast fall up air. What does it mean? All right, let's say you're in this position here. If you're here after hitting an up air, do you really think that you have enough time to slowly fall to the ground, enter landing lag, enter jump squat, and then double jump to connect another up air? Maybe if your opponent's playing with a single switch Joy-Con and it runs out of battery, but no, that's not gonna happen. If you were to fast fall after the up air though, you'd be able to hit the ground and double jump back up to connect another up air a lot quicker. So let's use this concept. Remember how when you were learning how to do a fast fall up air, you'd still get the final hitbox to connect even though you fast fell? That's what we're aiming for. While you're connecting an up air, wait until the very end of it to fast fall. If you did it right, you should see the fast fall spark come out as you hit the final hitbox of up air. From here, you'll hit the ground a lot faster and have much more room to get a follow up. Even if there's not much space between you and the ground, still go for this. All the frame advantage that you can get helps. All right, are you guys ready for the final tip? You guys are still ignoring this move? I've probably spent half an hour of the guy just talking about this move alone, but I still don't see enough hydro pump usage. What I wanna focus on now is using it for juggling. I've been giving you guys so many examples today, so here's one more. Lucina's forward air is generally thought of as a safe move to use when landing, right? 
It's safe if space has low landing lag and minus six on shield, which Credentia is definitely not gonna punish. Let's take a look at the move's hitbox real quick. Believe it or not, this is all part of Lucina's forward air. She's stuck without a hitbox for an entire half second. The thing is, Lucina's usually land just after tossing out the forward air so you don't have as much range to punish them for using it. Think about it, we do the same with our space forward airs. So, remember how Hydro Pump has that property that always pushes airborne opponents upwards no matter how you land it? Combine this with its additional pushback on airborne opponents and you have an amazing move for catching landings. You might be thinking, okay I went for Hydro Pump and now I'm way the hell over here, how am I supposed to punish Lucina? The answer to this question, as with all things in life, is bubbles. Well, that or Lil Pump. Being comfortable with Hydro Pump is extremely, extremely important. Just like you should be comfortable with using the move to recover, you should be comfortable with aiming the pump. If you Hydro Pump into the stage and shoot out a bubble, you won't be stuck in the move's animation for nearly as long and you'll be a lot closer to your opponent for a punish. Start using this. <laughs> Something else that you should be recognizing is that you don't use just Hydro Pump by itself to gimp an opponent. We're gonna go a lot more into detail about this in part 5 of the guide, but Hydro Pump can scoop up recovering opponents from underneath the ledge so well. And you don't need a Hydro Pump again, you get a free punish here. You can literally do this over and over again against a recovering King K rule and get a stock off of it. Alright, last thing I'm gonna tell you about Hydro Pump. Wanna optimally be a dick? If you gimp your opponent with Hydro Pump, hit them with multiple Hydro Pumps in a row. This can make it so that our more important moves such as forward air are removed from the seal list and are fresh for the very next stop. And if your opponent gets salty at you, just make the john. 5 quick tips! Alright, I hope you guys like this video format because it's kind of all I can do in my college situation right now. Dorm Wi-Fi really doesn't like Smash Ultimate Online, so I'm kind of just going through old clips seeing if there's anything that can apply to what I'm saying. And you can imagine how much that sucks for making a 5 part Grid Ninja Guide. Let me know if you enjoy this in the comments because I am definitely down to make another video just like this one. As always, documents and references are going to be in the description, so yeah. Take care guys, I'll see y'all next time.